Welcome, Adolfo. We are going to be screening your film Snowflake tonight here at the Digital Gym Cinema, and we wanted to give people a little insight into the film before they go in. So no spoilers, mm -hmm. but let's uh, talk a little bit about the film. First of all, where did you guys come up with this idea? Well, it's a it's kind of a funny story. We we actually came with the idea very quick. We were very frustrated because of our two projects that didn't work here in Germany. That we started kind of like, oh, let's do something that is different. The Germans bought it, and then they tried to make it very conventional. And then my friend, my writer, which is my best friend, Arendt, said, "Like you know what? Let's do something." Let's do something by ourselves now. Let's not try to do the whole thing, go to big production companies, Warner Brothers, whatever. We'll just do our own thing now. And we do it Robert Rodriguez style. We do it Danny Boyle style. We just, we shot this movie with a Canon 5D. You know, it's a photo cam. It's just like, we say like, let's do something. Let's write something. It's so crazy that no producer in a good same mentality would produce this movie. Let's just have fun. And that's actually how we did it. We, we had the initial idea. And one month later, we had the, like the first draft. And it was crazy. And everyone that read it was like, what is this? And like, exactly, that's what we wanted to do. And what made you want to do something with this kind of like cursed script idea? The aspect of, because it starts to just spiral at a certain point with that. Yes. Yes. Well, actually, I think it has a lot to do with the influence that we have from the people that we really love in cinema. You know, like I was talking to my writer and said, like, hey, we're going to do a very small movie that actually no one will watch. Let's just have fun. Let's put everything on that. On, let's try to make something, everything that we love and see if it sticks. You know, like we got Charlie Kaufman into it, which we love. You know, that's why we have the script as well. You know, we got all these movies that we love. We got Martin Scorsese, we got Sergio Leone, we got uh, Guy Ritchie, we got Tarantino, we got Rodriguez, we got Danny Boyle, the Coen brothers. We just put everything in it. And he said, like, let's try to now. We put Aaron Sorkin in it. You know, like we just put everything that we love. And we always love this kind of meta kind of films. You know, like we love like Stranger Than Fiction, for example. You know, mm -hmm. like movies that break the, this conventional thing you know and like normally these movies they don't get made because people say like oh people would not enjoy these kind of things or it's such a small kind of target group that will watch this but i enjoy that i enjoy when they break the fourth wall or i enjoy when the character talks to the audience you know like i enjoy stuff like that so and Aaron does too. So we said like, yeah, of course, let's do this. They find the script of the movie and then we see what it goes. Now, you mentioned people like Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino. And you can readily see that kind of in the pace and the, the cutting and all that. But the thing that really surprised me was you also have this kind of sense of guilt, redemption, and taking responsibility for your actions, which I felt was very unique to the film. So my favorite line in the movie, at the end, he says that my favorite line in the movie was very important for me. Take responsibility for your actions. I love that. And I think that gives yeah. it a very personal twist. Whereas, like a lot of filmmakers, I think when they riff on other filmmakers forget to sometimes make the film personally their own and that's what i liked about it so where did that aspect of the story come from i think that comes from me i think that's my part you know i'm from latin america and and you know their violence for example when we were writing this this scene at the beginning of the movie which is very strong and that people were like oh if that would happen in real life i was like i saw that in venezuela it happened to me you know, being in a situation like that, of course, it's, it's not that extreme, like in that important scene in the movie. But what for me, I always learned in Latin America with violence and this kind of kind of Western situation. Everyone has a gun and everyone has a responsibility for it. I learned that, and we have this saying in Spanish as well. It's like, hey, you need to know what you're doing, you know, and... 
that's what I brought to the movie. I think that's a very personal thing. That's why I fought so much for that line at the end. I think like it has to be. No matter if you're going a good person or a bad person in this world, you need to know that will come back always to you. You know, and as I say, like when I mentioned these filmmakers, they're very like role models for us. We never intended to copy them. Never. I think like, yes, I use the rule from Quentin Tarantino because it's the most famous right now of using what you love, you know, but it's funny because the Quentin Tarantino question always comes from like, are you copying Tarantino? I said like, no, I stole from where he steals from. It's true, you know, like Quentin is a huge Sergio Leone fan. Me too. You know, like if you see Snowflake is a Western today, you know, which some Coen brothers, Charlie Kaufman twist, you know, uh, and I love that. And, I, and I'm not ashamed of that because we just want we just wanted to have fun. We wanted to make a movie for people and enjoy movies like this. You know, I never we never went into this pretentious kind of artistic way of saying like, oh, let's do something that is going to ravage the filmmaking and we're going to invent how, you know, we say, like, no, let's have fun with what we love, you know. And but for me, it's always no matter what I'm doing, even if I'm doing a commercial, I always try to put this kind of be responsible about what you're doing, you know. And even if you're having fun, I love when in the back of your head you go like, wait a second, why am I laughing about this? You know, I want you to have fun and to be entertained. But then maybe two days later, if you think about the movie, you go like, hmm. You know, which I love in Snowflake because sometimes you feel from some characters and actually go like, but why if I should be feeling for someone else? And it's about subjectivity. You know, like that came for me because of the Latin American culture. Uh, because if there is so easy to get to know people like this. And it happened to me with someone of my family that was not a cool person, was a good person, but just because I was in his family, it was subjective. So I liked him. And I realize how dangerous that is because all of a sudden he's not a bad person anymore because he's my cousin. And that is really, really a stoop for me since today. And I'm always very careful, even with my friends are like, hey, there is always a division because we tend, we humans tend to be very subjective very quickly. If, ah, he made me laugh. He's a good person. No, it's not. You know, Joe Pesci in Goodfellas makes me laugh. He's a terrible character. You know, but you like him somehow. And that's what I always think that is very interesting about subjectivity and, and cinema. So I always said, yes, we're doing a crazy, completely <laughs> ridiculous movie. But I always told everyone, take it serious. You know, don't be cynical about it. Don't be like, ah, whatever, we're doing a crazy movie. Respect your character and then it will it would come down to that end, you know, like take responsibility. I think one of the surprising things is when the film comes to an end, how much you really care for these guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does have this fast pace and a lot of action. And, uh, you know, on a certain level, you're, you're taking it a bit lightly in places. And then when you get to the end, suddenly you go like, oh, wait a minute. I really care for these guys a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's what I especially in America. I think the best screens we had was America and, and in Sweden, for example. Um, it's because I was really, like, people really understood that. You know, like, I think your the, the, the viewers in America are so well-educated in cinema and in how to watch films. You know, like, you really appreciate how to, ah, wait a second, like, what did you say? Why am I caring about these people so much? You know, so you really take the time to think about it. You know, and that for me is as, as a film freak is exactly the same. I find myself watching movies where I go like, wait a second, let me rewatch this. Because I don't know in what moment the director made me feel this. And this is brilliant, you know. And for me, it was very important exactly that. Because, you know, I, I learned that from Scorsese. It's like I always find myself attracted to all these people, even if I shouldn't be. You know, and again, goes back to the subjectivity thing. But here, even in this movie with these two guys, somehow you you find like a middle point with them, you know, because actually they're doing exactly the same that she's doing, 
in another level. They are already in some, you know, they're almost at the end of that search, you know, because that's how it, that's how it normally ends when you're going down that path, you know. You know, it's from samurai movies, you know. They say in every good samurai film, the samurai has to die, you know, because it's the, that's the journey, you know. And, and, and I love that this kind of... Um, I didn't want to give you exactly what you're expecting. That's why how Aaron and I always said, like, let's find, create characters, but every time you think you can know or predict what is going to happen, we break that expectation, you know? And that was, you know, at the beginning, you think I'm doing a German movie, which opens with two guys that are not from Germany, you know? And, and a lot of Germans got very shocked by that, you know? So from the get-go, we're going like, this is not the movie you expect. And at the end, you will feel for these people, you know? And I just wanted to know, like, to show what, what, or for me to test what the beauty of storytelling is, you know? And I don't go that deep into their things, you know? There is no big emotional scenes. Just sort of like some small nuances that you enjoy how they are and you would like to drink a beer with them. Let's put it like that, you know? Even when they don't drink, you know? But that's the thing. They're they're nice people at the end of the day. Now your film screened at Horrible Imaginings Film Festival, yes. and yeah. I was on the panel judging for awards. And I have to say that when it came to voting for best actor, across the board, all the judges said we can't pick just one of the leads; <laughs> it has to be them together. Talk about casting them and about kind of that chemistry that they had. Well, you will laugh. The first scene is a real scene. The first scene, like the discussion that they have about the dinner, the kebab, <laughs> this happens at least 10 times a year when I go out with them. You know, really, like Erkan, who plays Tan, he's Turkish. So for him, kebab is religion. You know, like he is the kebab connoisseur in Berlin. And every time we go out, he does that. He goes like, oh, no, the sauce is in the wrong place, the meat. And I always have to laugh about this. That's why we wrote the scene. Going back to cast, I went to the Robert Rodriguez rule from Rebel Without a Crew. And everything, honestly, everything on the movie is what we had. The two leading roles, which won the award there, and I'm so happy about that, they're not professional trained actors. They, their, their school was snowflake, actually, you know, which makes me very happy because they were not into this kind of German pacing, you know? So, and for me, I was always like, do this faster, you know, like be like this. They were very good friends of mine, my best friends. They're the producers of the movie as well, you know? So, so I, we all trained together in this movie. So from the get go, we were like, yeah, the movie is about these two guys discussing about kebab they're crazy enough let's let's make them characters and the guy who plays Yavid Reza Brojera he is like that you can go tomorrow night with him go eat something he is that guy he talks that fast he annoys you completely he's a lovely human being you love him because he has such a big heart you know it's this it's them I just tried to you know we what Aaron did amazingly in the script was to write roles for them, you know? So they just, then it was my job to make them, okay, to make them believable as an actors, and then they just deliver brilliantly, you know? And this isn't revealing too much, but your characters are kind of at the mercy of this cursed script, and the person <laughs> writing it is this dentist. So where did you come up with the idea for his character? First of all, he's a dentist. Because a friend of ours is a dentist. And we were writing the movie, so like, yeah, what does he do? And our friend says, like, yo, you can shoot at my dentist place if you want to. And we're like, this is great. He's a dentist then. You know, like, that's how we really, we, every scene in the movie was because we had something. You know, it was never, we just used what we had and we just write, we wrote around it. And... Um, the funny thing about that character is his name is the name of the real writer in real life. My, my friend who wrote the script, 
His name is Aaron Remmers. And then we said, like, it would be completely fucked up if we name it after the writer. And because we didn't have to respond to any big producer or studio, we said, like, of course we're going to do that. So I love the actor who does it. He's one of my favorite uh, characters and actors right now. And I told him, okay, I want you to play this kind of weird, uh, super love with your ideas uh, kind of guy and he's a well-known actor here in Germany and he said like hey I never had the chance to play something like this so I'm in and I think he did it brilliantly like everyone loves him he has the best scenes I think like it's just this fun of you know he's God let's call it like that you know now, do you have any uh, thing you want anything you want to tell the audience before they go in to see your film? Um, you know, one of the reasons we're showing it is because I think films need to be seen in a theater and more importantly, with other people. Like it's so much more fun to see it with other people. So I don't know if you have anything that you want to tell our audience before they go in to see your film. Well, and Ferris is about how we did. You know, we did the movie over four years. I shot the movie over two years on the weekends, you know, because we had no budget, you know, like funnily, if you watch the making of, it's just like five people on set. Everyone had to bring his own food because we had no, no catering. You know, we did it for the fun and for the love of cinema. You know, like we always say like, hey, if at the end of the movie, we have to burn it down because it sucks, at least we were having fun, you know, and so it was very important for us. We did it for like like Aaron Sorkin rules. Do a movie you want to watch, you know? And we wanted to see how wild this ride is. That what now is happening, I'm super happy that you're going to watch it in the cinema. It was never intended for cinema. You know, we showed, it, we showed it with a 5D. We said like, yeah, we will watch it someday and show it to our friends in the office. That's it. Now that this is happening with the movie, it's, a, it's an amazing gift for, for us. Enjoy it. Um, don't think that all the answers and everything is in this movie. The movie has a lot of levels, which I really enjoy, you know, but it is entertaining. And if you want to think a little bit more about something else, you're allowed to do it. But not everything is, it's not a Tarkovsky movie, you know, and that's very important to say. I think like you should enjoy it, have fun, think about it, tell your friends about it. And it's okay to hate it as well because it's a crazy movie and we love it. Please help us support this movie because we just be, we, it's because of this that the movie exists. People liking it, showing it to someone else. You know, like one year ago we, when we finished it, no one believed in it because we're like, it's a weird thing. And now we're having this beautiful moment because of people like you or Miguel, you know, which enjoy the movie. And these festivals help us so much because they are, it's like a recognition of it's okay to be brave and break some rules and have fun. You know, we never made it because of the money. We just made it because of the love of the movies be before us. It's like a tribute to cinema, honestly. And do you have another uh, film planned? Um, I just shot a movie, which is very different. I shot it for Germany, for, Ger for Warner Brothers. Uh, but now I'm writing because now of the success of Snowflake, uh, of course, the Germans are being more like, oh, okay, yeah, well, this is a very interesting movie. So Aaron and I, we just sold a script, which is, let's call it Snowflake, but 2.0 with a budget, with some maybe some actors that I can call before, and I don't have to shoot over two years on the weekends, you know? So we have a project right now, which is like in the same universe, in the same crazy time, you know, like we are just destroying again film structure and we're very excited about this because it's going to be a fun movie. That's one of the projects that we have right now related to the snowflake kind of universe. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I, I believe it's about one o'clock in the morning over there. Yes, it's 1.23 a.m. All right. Well, we really appreciate you taking some time to uh, talk to our film geeks here in San Diego. Please enjoy it. It's amazing. Really, I'm so happy you're all going to watch it. And yeah, let us know what you think, right? Instagram, Facebook, we're always there to answer any questions or whatever. And the movie comes out in America, uh, in Blu-ray, uh, the 18th, in three days. 
So we're really excited. And now it's already in iTunes and in Amazon, if I'm not wrong, in America. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I hope that you have an amazing screening and yeah, see you soon. <laughs>